Hey guys, it is Carl Brown for GuitarLessons365.com. Have a great one from Van Halen off the 5150 album today. We're gonna learn how to play the best of both worlds. Some really cool stuff. And this one's actually in standard tuning, which not, not a lot of Van Halen is. So standard tuning, uh, no, so nothing weird there. Uh, before I get into it, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and ring the notification bell so you'll know when I release a new lesson. And uh, please check out my Guitar Academy. The link is in the description. It's at guitarlessons365.com. It's the GL365 Academy. It contains all my guitar courses. We've got a great community going over there. And I'd really be cool if you guys would go check it out and uh, maybe you'd like to join. All right, hope to see you there. So let's jump into it. Um, so we're in standard tuning here. And it goes back and forth between um, kind of a... It almost sounds like a distortion tone through like a... Like a Piezo, piezo pickup system. I never know how to say that. Um, like almost like an acoustic pickup on a. It's just a very interesting sound that he has for this song. It sounds like it's kind of layered with a couple different sounds. And Eddie usually live. He doesn't really do, do a lot of just you know straight channel switching. He I guess he does some, but he likes the songs like this to really have the gain going and then he'll just roll the volume off to like, you know, two or three to clean it up a little bit and then he'll that'll be the clean sound. So it's probably what he's doing here. I'm not doing that, I'm just using the foot switches, I'm changing uh, the thing because I got, there's so much stuff going on, I gotta do something with my pick, so I usually put it in my mouth or something and then I gotta, so it's just like, I, I can't do the changes. So he's doing something magic with his pick somewhere, so. I don't know how he's holding it, but I can't do the finger picking and hold it in my hand at the same time. So um, he probably is, but I couldn't really get an up close look at it. So let's start here with this intro. <laughs> so this is based off of, I think Eddie actually fingers it like this. Um, I, I saw a quick little glimpse of him doing it, and I think he was doing it like that. Um, but anyway, it's the second fret on the, it's like a D power chord. So the third fret on the B, second fret on the G, and then the open D. But then he's got the second fret on this um, low E string. So it's basically a first inversion D major chord. And then he moves up. Just basically pick up the uh, ring finger and pick up, move up one fret uh, on the low E string to that G note there. So, so when you do that, kind of you gotta kill it with the right hand between each one. And then it goes to an A power chord. Now I like to play it because I, it, for me it just moves around less. Um, if you can put your thumb at the low E st uh, string on the second fret, I just hold this like a, these two like a normal D would, and then I'll hold that F sharp with the thumb. And then all I gotta do is put down the second finger on that third fret there and then lift up the note on the G string. So So to me, that's a little bit easier than going, well, it's not easier, it's just less movement. I don't know, I'm just lazy. All right, so anyway, play it whatever way you want. So we're just doing that. All right, and here is where um, he switches to really kind of a finger style. Now you can probably get away with it cheating a little bit. Because it does sound like a part of the song later where he actually does, he is playing those triads with a pick. Um, but I know just in the beginning, he's really kind of got that snappy sound because he's going, um, he's really kind of a just a uh, finger style. Now you can try to find a place to put your pick, like you can do it like here, but my this is where I would usually do it for like tapping, holding my pick between, with my uh, middle finger there. But since it's happening to do the, it's, it's kind of unstable, so I, I just 
So anyway, I'm gonna put it on my leg right now. So this is really based around. So that right there is gonna be um, based around the same chords that we did in the beginning. So let me just show you the chords first. And throughout the song, he plays these with completely different rhythms all throughout the place. So I'm just going to kind of give you some tips, but you're going to have to use your ear a little bit to know the rhythm to play each one throughout the song. So if we went through it, it would take a day and a half. So we have the A major chord. So just the second fret on the D, G, and the B. And then we have a G major, which is the third fret on the B, fourth fret on the G, and fifth on the D. And then we have a D major. Just so we went between the G and the D down there. We go between this G, and then what you do is you move back to the fourth fret on the D string, second fret on the, the uh, G, and third fret on the B. So we have this. So here's how you want to look at this part. It's pretty repetitive except for the way he plays it rhythmically throughout the track. And what I mean by that is, um, he does have this E minor chord in there. So we have this. So right there, that first time through, we're just the A. So G, D, G, D, G, D, A. And then when you go back around the second time, It went, instead of going G, D, it went G, A, and then it did that chord. Um, it skipped right from the G to the A. And then it does, it, so whenever it does this E chord after the A, which is the second fret there on the, um, on the uh, D string, open G, open B. So this. So whenever you hear that chord, which you'll hear it throughout the song, um, just put in different different parts of the song or whatever. He's gonna jump, he gets there, jumping straight from the G to the A, and then does that chord. And then the rest of the parts, when you don't hear that, it just ends on the A, it's going, it gets to the G from the A with the B, in, the, the D chord in between. So it's like, if you look at it, G to D, G, D, G, D, A. Then you start over, G, D, G, A, E. So whenever you have that E, you're gonna have to jump straight from that G to that to the to the A chord. Skip that D. All right. So that is the the best way. When I when I was going through this song, I'm like, man, how I'm gonna show? There's like so many rhythms here for this part. How he plays it. Um, the best way is just to see it as that. Whenever you hear that chord, you're gonna jump straight from G to A. And then the rest of the times you hear that, you're gonna just, with any other time where you just kind of resolve on the A, it went there from G to D to A. So it's just really three chords, you're going around a lot, and then you add that E chord every once in a while, and it's gonna, uh, you just gotta know the sound of it. Uh, and then you, I think you'll be able to figure it out pretty easy. But that gives you a good little, idea of, of what, what make sure you're doing it right if you got that chord it's going to jump straight from the G to the A all right then it goes back into that riff we did all right so that had a little bit of a variation on it and that was so sometimes you'll hear the chorus played kind of like I just did there. So we started with the distortion, and we went that little clean section, and then we went to back to the distortion, and the riff was the same chorus, but they played it. There's a couple of variations in there in that little ending that we had too. So that kind of looks like this. It's the same way. So same way there. Then, and then when we get here, we have this. This two zero on the low E string. And then a slight bend on the third fret of low E into that A power chord. So it is. And then 
Uh, a lot of vibrato, kind of a bend on the low, the third fret on the low E again. So we have this. Now here, instead of doing that little fill, we end the riff. Which is how they end the choruses all the time. So we have this. So that's just, you're gonna hold the D power chord. So you're gonna hit the open A, then third fret on A, into that D power chord. Then straight to the uh, third fret on the A string. Then back to the D power chord twice. Back to the third fret on the A. And to the power, A power chord twice. All right, and then we get to uh, verse number one here, and it looks like this. Actually, let me switch to the clean channel. Sorry, here we go. goes back into the distortion there. So that part there is pretty repetitive. Really the end of this riff is where he does a little bit of variation. So once again, kind of a finger style. So uh, uh, we're gonna play, slide into the uh, fourth fret on the A string. Then play four on the D. I'm sorry, second on the D, second on the G. Second on the B. So that's a first inversion A major chord. To that G chord we did earlier. So. Then to the D. Then to the A. So we have this. Then you do this. So that's sliding into that uh, fourth fret on the A again and then play. Second on the B, second on the G. So do this. All right, now slide into that fourth fret on the A again. Then you play, you know, it actually sounds like this. So you're gonna slide into that fourth fret on the A again and then play two on the G and then two on the D. Then back to that four, and then four zero on the op on the A string. You can do a slight bend there if you want. So that goes to this. We have uh, uh, this fifth fret on the A, D, and the G. And then you're gonna go to the fifth fret on the low E, the A, fourth fret on the D. Then to the A power chord, and then you start everything over. After it does that a couple times, then it goes. All right, so it goes back, and then it goes back into the same clean verse part. Now, the clean part is slightly different at the end. It goes through the same riff. So this is basically. Uh, Right going into the pre-chorus, what he does here is kind of all you need, really need to do is the fifth fret on the D and the G here, and then rotate between the fifth fret on the uh, uh, and fourth fret on the G there. All right, and then that takes us to the pre-chorus. Now the pre-chorus, 
what I'm going to be showing you, this pre-chorus has uh, multiple overdub guitars that are creating that. All right, so um, what I'm going to be doing is what Eddie usually played live to make it sound the most like the album. Because obviously, it's, but it's not going to sound exactly like it because those overdubs aren't there. All right, so this is what Eddie does live for the pre-chorus. <laughs> Alright, so we have this right here. So, we have the 8th fret on the A string and the 5th fret on the D and the G. Did that a few times. Then resolve the, um, to the 7th fret there on the A with the 5th fret on the D and the G again. Then we kind of do that same thing, but move it up to the 9th fret there. So we had the 12, 11 here going on the A string. So we go between, we play those three strings, the 12, then 11 on the A, then back to 12. Now these slides from seven to nine on D, so we have this. Then to this E chord. So we have this. The ninth fret on the D, G, and the B to this B chord, which is ninth on the D, eight on the G, seven on the B, and then move that up to the tenth fret, then thirteen. Go with this. Then back to the chorus. All right, so that part right there was when we did the intro of the song and we I opened up with that distorted riff and then we went to the clean part and then the second half of the intro when we went back to the distorted riff, that's basically exactly what I just played there. That's the chorus of the song. So it's that part that has the... With a little... Those little fills. And the same ending. All right, so then we go back through the same verse and pre-chorus uh, riffs, pretty much the same, so just a little bit shorter, and then the same chorus. And then we get to Eddie's solo. So before we do the solo, let me just play through you, uh, play through the, the, the rhythm guitar part, if you have a second guitarist. I know Eddie doesn't play this live, but um, this is what, kind of like, didn't spend a lot of time on this, pretty simple background here, but um, I'll just play through it real quick, so if you have a second guitarist, you can play this. So here we go. All right, so that was basically just a B suspended fourth chord up top here. So we had this, you do it here. Bro. But it's at the seventh fret there on the uh, low E, and then ninth fret all across the A, D, and the G. Then resolve that to a B major. Kind of chug on that, and then do it again. Then do the same thing on the G. Then the A. And then back to B. the G again, and then he kind of chugs on that G a little bit, and then he quickly, he goes C to D power chord on the, off the A string, and then D to E. So it's kind of a, kind of an abrupt ending there at the, at the end, so it's just kind of... And all right, so now let me just play through the solo for you real quick, and then I'll show you how to play that phrase by phrase. So here we go. <laughs> Mm. 
All right, so that one, uh, it's got some very awkward stuff in it. Some, cr it's kind of like a crazy harmonic that starts it. That's impossible to find on this guitar. Um, so anyway, so we're gonna we're gonna start with this, this a big whammy thing. Kind of that kind of thing. Just find your pinch harmonic and just let it wail. All right, and then we go into this. All right, so you'll see him on the Live Without a Net recording. Tap this from the very beginning. Um, on the recording, he's not tapping the first time you hear that little melody. Um, a good uh, hint of that, too, is at the beginning, when they're just kind of riffing back and forth, he actually plays it like he does on the record. You'll hear him do that at the, before the song starts when he's just kind of messing around with Sammy Hagar. So you can tell he's not tapping that part because the first two notes you hear, they bleed together. All right, so um, don't be fooled there. He's not tapping. He does tap that melody in the second half of the solo, though. So anyway, we have this. So we're going to slide into the 16th fret there on the D. And then play 14 on the G with it. Let them ring together like that. Then slide to the 16 again, and then play 16 on the G. So you kind of repeat that. With a little bit different rhythm. Then up at the 21st fret on the G string, big bend. A release, a lot of vibrato. And then we have this kind of signature Eddie uh, Legato lick here. That's kind of cool, that little last bin. So we have this. A... So that little lick, you're gonna play seven on the B string, hammer 10. Do a bend and release, pull off to seven, pull off to the open string. So we just. And then back, hammer back onto the seven, hammer back on ten, pull back off to the seven and the open string. So it's kind of good. Then over to the ninth fret on the G string, and back to seven on the B, pull back off to the open. And then we have we have a, just a bend and release at the ninth fret on the G, pull off to seven. Look at this. And then when you go back to that nine on the G, it goes like this. So that's a got a base of do a half step in, then hold then do a whole step in. All right, now when you go, easy to lose track of where you're at here. When you get to that bend, that's when you start doing the taps. So we do a whole step bend, tap 12, pull off, still got the bend, and then you get a tap 14. Tap 14 with your ring finger. So then you can pull off to that 12, pull off to your index finger, tap. So it's kind of tricky. Then you gotta watch those lower strings. And then after you pull off from that, so, so you pull off from that 14 to the 12 in the right hand, then you can pull off uh, into the, the, the ninth fret in the fretting hand and release the bend. So this is one of those things that's easier at full speed than it is in slow motion. <laughs> All right, then bend again. 
and release and then kind of pull off the seven and hammer back on a nine. So that's kind of an interesting part. So All right, then we have this section. All right, so it's getting towards the end of it, and we have one of the... Now, in the, I'm just gonna show you what's going on in the left. It's kind of a standard Eddie tapping thing, so if, hopefully you've done tapping before. Don't even attempt this stuff. So we have like uh, seven and 10 on the, on the, in the left hand, the high E and the B, and then seven, nine on the D. All right, so what's going on in the right hand? So it's kind of one of those standard kind of tapping. He kind of taps the 12th fret, slides it up, and then really quickly you're going to hear him go. He's going to basically tap the 15th fret on the B string and do a whole step bend and release in the left hand. Uh, so you can bend that 10th fret there. So we have this. So he continues doing that kind of the trill stuff down here. So we have this. And if he slides up that 15, you're gonna then tap 14. So after you slide up that B string, you're gonna tap 14 and then do a whole step bend at the ninth fret behind it. So bend and release. So we, it's kind of hard to do this stuff slow motion because. And then he slides up the G string. And then once again does taps the 14 and does a bending release in the left hand. So we have this. So after you do that bending release on that second 14, kind of you do a pull off, you pull off the nine to seven and go back to nine, let that ring, and then bend the nine and then end the solo. Going 10, 7 on the B, then slide into the 12th fret of the B. So we have this. All right, then we get back to the clean section after the solo. And here's. skip that D. Um, here's where it sounds like he's actually kind of doing a palm muted with a pick. And he'll, see, he'll do it different like that. He'll just go and kind of just strum across that E chord. So, but it's the same chords that we did before, so hopefully it'd be pretty easy to get. And then we go back and do the same chorus of the big chorus. Kind of an extended version of it. All right, and then at the end of the song, it goes back into those clean triads again. But yeah, once again, it's more of the same um, that we did earlier in this track. All right, so it's uh, got some confusing stuff, just how he plays, how he switches from between the distortion to the clean stuff and the finger style and the pick stuff. And uh, the solo's got some crazy stuff in it. And uh, so anyway, it's not an easy song. It's really fun. Just the, the, the rhythms are really fun, though, once you get everything down. Uh, it's a really fun song to play. Uh, it was very, very catchy. All right, so I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.